Welcome back to Brashonomics, everyone. This is Heather Moore, and joining me now is Dave Duncan, broker with Keller Williams. And Dave has had an incredible sales record over the course of his career, averaging 50 transactions per year since 1986, and then over 100 transactions per year since 2000, which makes you a pretty busy guy. Dave, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming on with me. So it seems like uh, you continue to be pretty busy, uh, especially this time of year with uh, summer right around the corner. You know, it's been a great start to the year. It's gotten real busy real fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they always say spring is the time when everybody is thinking about moving more so than the other times of the year. But also right now, it's kind of that time to buy. You had even used the words the platinum time to buy. And I think people read a lot of articles and see in the news that now's like a great time to buy. If you're a buyer looking to get into the market, now's a great time. But might not understand exactly what some of those reasons are. Are and, and so I was hoping you could might be able to explain what components are making right now that platinum great perfect time to buy. Well, there's there's three parts to that. The first thing is is there's a trend line that that you forecast what housing is going to do. And if you drew a straight line going back to the mid '80s, increasing the market by four percent a year, mm -hmm. and that's that's a fair appreciation rate. And of course, we've had the wild ups up the wild ups and the wild downs. Quite wild indeed. <laughs> um, but as of today, home prices are twenty four percent below that trend line. And there's always corrections, and we just had right. a great correction down. Now we're going to start seeing that correction up. So that's number one. Number two, our rates are the lowest in history, and. You know, I'm talking about mortgage rates here. Mortgage rates, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and we've been talking about this, that on the show for a long time. But I'm telling you, if you haven't bought yet and you're thinking you might do it, you should run to Cobalt Mortgage and Ben Brashen's team and, and start the process. Well, I'm sure Ben would appreciate that plug. And just to give people some comparison, though, you know, home prices being 24% below the trend line, can you give us some idea of, you know, maybe, you know, 20 years ago what, mortgage rates were in comparison to now when they were kind of really high? Yeah, the, the rates themselves? Yeah. Oh, gosh. 30 years ago, 1980 to 82, rates popped up to 18 to 20%. Mm -hmm. And that's a 30-year fixed rate loan. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get real creative to put deals together then because nobody could pay those kind of rates. I can imagine. So if you're, if you're sitting around wondering if it's going to bounce, you know, a half a point lower, think about how lucky you are that we're not sitting at those types of rates right now. Um, and, you know, aside from low mortgage rates, um, you had mentioned something interesting about, you know, how much percentage of income is paying mortgages these days, which is another huge comparison compared to like 30 years ago in the 80s. Again, just another incredible example of why now is the best time. In 1981, it took 36 percent of somebody's income mm -hmm. to make a house payment. 36% so is a little more than a third. And that's been kind of a common number for years and years. They said you never want to, to pay more than, what, 30% of after taxes of your exactly. income or something like that? Exactly. Yeah. That's a good number. Mm -hmm. uh, and, of course, that number did get over 40 during the heyday of the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Today it only takes 13% of a family's income. 13%. It's never been that low in my lifetime. And is that just because, you know, prices are lower? Prices are lower and rates are lower, the combination of the two. Well, that's great. Well, um, there was some other uh, things we talked about, you know, in terms of why now is a great time to buy. And you talked about things affecting the market and employment was uh, something you'd mentioned. And I was curious to hear a little bit more about how that is act affecting the market in a little bit of a way. You know, it still is. Um, you know, the worst is behind us and it is busy, real busy now. We'll talk more about that. But still, the one thing that's slowing things down is employment. Mm -hmm. it's so that is holding back the demand for home buying. There's still a lot of people who want to buy who are financially able to buy, but they're just uncomfortable with their job status, so they don't make mm -hmm. that decision. And the unemployment factor generally influences consumer confidence. So as long as we still have people look, a lot of people looking for jobs, I think it will stay that way. And, you know, even though you can read that now, you know, in the news or hear from a, a realtor that now might be the right time, I think it with, with every couple or potential new homeowner, there's something that makes it the right equation for you. So when you're talking to, you know, people that might become first-time buyers or even going to, you know, relocate, what are some of those factors that make it the right time for them personally to buy? You know, you know obviously the market conditions, we've just been spending a lot of time on that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the freedom to move. A lot of times they're locked in a lease or, you know, where they want to go, they can't quite afford yet. So, mm -hmm. so the freedom to make that decision. 
And then, of course, major life events. You, know, you got married. You just got married, so you want to settle down and have your own place. You mm-hmm. just had a child or another child, or you need more room. Things like that. Mm-hmm. And in terms of you know making it right for you, generally, someone's probably going to want to consider a home more of invest a time investment. I think people used to consider three to five years in their first home, and it's it's longer these days, isn't it? Yeah, the number we hear all the time is seven, but. Uh, I, you know, I'd say five to seven is a good number you still see. And there's obviously not hard, fast rules for everybody, but I think that that's just kind of, you know, an, an interesting tidbit. I, I think typically seniors or people that have owned homes keep you know, been for quite a while, stay in them longer. Mm-hmm. Younger couples, families obviously upgrade and move up faster. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of, you know, making that change or becoming a first-time home buyer moving on, do you feel like a lot of people... Um, are afraid of the down payment aspect of you, purchasing you know, a home? A lot of them are. We hear that so much that, that you know, i, I got to save up. i got to save up more money before I can buy. Mm-hmm. And, and again, more interesting stats is 68% of the first-timers and 28% of the re- repeat buyers have down payments of 5% or less. What they don't know is there's multiple zero-down programs out there, yeah. not just for veterans, but one's called USDA where, you have, where you're in an outlying area. Another one is the house key where the state helps contribute to your down payment. So there's a lot of options, and you right. just need to explore them because your lender is going to know yeah. what those options are. Instead of just assuming that you might have to put down 10, 15, or even you know, 20%, which some people do, but there are, there are options. And definitely you know, talk to someone like you to get a referral to the right person, or Ben, who's not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and there's also a lot of uh, investors on the market right now, isn't there? You know, that was one of my biggest surprises when I first started doing a lot of bank-owned stuff a couple of years ago. You know, there's nobody buying anything investor-wise for a long time. But, mm-hmm. but once these houses started, prices plummeting, I'm, I was amazed at the volume of cash that came out of the woodwork. And I mean a really? lot. Like strictly cash transactions? Lots of cash transactions for hundreds of thousands and even millions. It might be a block, you know, bulk sales of lots or bulk sales of homes. Mm-hmm. but. But I was shocked. Is it typically people that are just kind of building a portfolio and becoming property managers, situations like that? Or does it kind of run the gamut of different kind of investors? I would say prob- this is just my wild guess. I would say 60, 60% to two-thirds are that. They're building a portfolio and keeping it. Um, and then some did it to flip. There's mm-hmm. some guys that made that as a profession. But I think most of them are just very shrewd. They've been around the block. They've seen a couple cycles, and they know now it's time to buy. They're mm-hmm. going to keep it till the market turns. and. You know, then they can, then they have a big big profit. They can decide what to do with it or not. Yeah, absolutely. And it, and it seems you know, like from what while well, all the things you've just mentioned, it seems like it's a great time to be a buyer and and really finding out if it's the right time for you is you know is something you'd want to speak speak with Dave or another realtor of your choice about. And in terms of uh, selling your home in this market, I think a lot of people are you know waiting for the prices to go up a little. But if you're in the position to sell your home right now due to whatever circumstances may be, it sounds like you have some uh, tips and some insight on, on what's, you know, making listings, you know, get go in and off the market pretty quickly. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting time right now. I, uh, two months ago, I would have said it's different than ever before. Normally, it's a good market and everything gets some activity, or it's a tough market and very little things get activity. Mm-hmm. But then I would say it's, it's odd. If you had a price point of, you know, zero to 100 percent of the range of what it could be, if you're in the bottom half, it's busy. You're getting multiple offers. Things are selling. If you're in yeah. the top half, it's as, as, as if you didn't exist. So the point is that pricing properly makes a world of difference. For, right. For example, here's some statistics. If you price pricing listings at market value, mm-hmm. meaning taking the advice of what your realtor says. Which some people don't like to do. Uh, no. <laughs> no. But, but, but hopefully there will be a lesson here. Yeah. You have half, 50% fewer days on the market. Mm-hmm. So half the, it sells in half the time. And I think that can be even way different. Nowadays, with the market turning like it has, we're seeing things sell in a week versus right. if you're overpriced, you can be there for, for a year. Yeah. Uh, your, your list price to sales price, meaning what you list it at and what you ultimately take as a sales price, you're 8% higher if you price it right going in. That's nice. So, again, you're yielding money. You, by a, putting a smaller, a lower price going in, you get more coming out. Mm-hmm. And that, it, it doesn't make sense to a lot of people, but I've seen it over and over and over. It takes fewer showings to, to get an offer, two to be exact. Fewer price reductions, obviously, because you're priced right going in. Mm-hmm. And then finally, more multiple offers, and, and we'll spend more time on that. Matter of fact, at our sales meeting today, uh, somebody talked about a listing they had here on the east side. And in four days, they had 23 offers. Wow. Unbelievable. And sold for 50000 more than the ask price. And 
That's just because they're location, location number one, and there's a shortage of homes available in that area. Yeah, and on, and of these lists, these are all benefits to the seller. Fewer showings, you know, less strain on your schedule, having to clean and stage and multiple offers. Then you get kind of get to choose and pick the offer that's going to benefit you the most as well. Believe me, as a listing agent, you love that. You look like the the hero, the rock star, com- compared <laughs> compared to the last five years. What if you're not, uh, you know, being such a rock star, and the list price needs uh, some sort of reduction? Any tips on that? And yeah, yeah. If it needs a if it needs a price reduction, bottom line is you got to do it quickly. Mm-hmm. Listings that reduce the prices, the price after eight weeks took more than three times longer to sell. So yeah. if you waited two months, it's going to take you three times longer to sell. Typically, you're not reacting quick enough. And it took it twice as many price reductions as those that dropped in the first three weeks. So yeah. here's the lesson, and we've been saying this for years, most activities in the first 15 to 20 days, and, and that, that's truer than ever. If you haven't got an offer in the first 20 days, drop the price. Well, it seems like, you know, when you're putting a home on the market, you really only get one chance to really do it right because people will notice if the price drops and you're doing it again, I mean, you're probably not going to get any more people through the home than haven't been through before, right? Unless you do something dramatic, because mm-hmm. most of the agents, are, they, they can look. You're right. It's it's all common information. They can look and see how long it's been in the market, what the price drops were. It's all mm-hmm. easily looked at. Absolutely. And unless it's something dramatic, it's not going to, it'll, it'll barely make a blip. Right. When something dramatic that you can do is uh, staging. And I think that with p- uh, proper staging, which I'm sure you coach all your clients on, is getting that room looking right and taking right pictures and doing it right the first time. Ab- <clears throat> Absolutely. It's, uh, again, a benefit to the seller. You, if you stage your home first, there's some advantages. It's going to sell a few showings sooner and almost two weeks faster than your non stage counterparts. Mm hmm. So it, it, we've been saying that forever. The stage homes sell quicker. And some of the new developments I have will have a couple furnished models. Right. But if we have a house that's kind of sitting there and isn't getting activity, we'll, we'll, we'll put move, furniture in we'll it. We'll put furniture in it, and invariably a week or two later we got an offer. Right, because you do a lot of new homes, so I imagine that you just have to make it look kind of like a, a model home almost with everything kind of ready to go, or the main areas anyway. I, the primary builder I work with, Pacific Ridge Homes, has an inventory of staging Mm-hmm. items so then they move things around here and there yeah it can really make all the difference and again we're here with dave duncan broker and uh, owner of the dave Gun- duncan group with keller williams um we just have a minute about here left dave anything else you want to mention about people looking to buy or sell and tips for the market right now you know it's just it's just really busy uh, i've said before about six months worth of inventory is is a neutral market not right. buyers or sellers and now we're down to about two, two and a half months worth of inventory. So mm-hmm. it's, it's gotten very brisk, very fast. So as quick as the switch got flipped last time in a bad way, mm-hmm. it got flipped this time in a good way. Yeah, which which makes it really difficult, but which also makes working with a professional even more important because you can look at houses all day on Zillow or Redfin or whatever. They might they might have gone off the market, and you're not going to know unless you have someone to help you out. Well, uh, thanks again so much for joining us, Dave. We're going to go to break again. That was Dave Duncan, broker with Keller Williams and owner of the Dave Duncan Group. We're listening to Brashonomics. This is Heather Moore, and we'll be right back.